I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know when this, I don't know when this clip is from. A uh, friend, uh, an independent journalist, Walker Bregman found it. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's recent, but I don't know what year it's from. Um, Walker finds all kinds of yeah, good stuff. I don't, I don't know when this is from, but it really doesn't matter when it's from. I think it speaks volumes. Let's take a look. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was asked about cutting the military budget. Uh, yeah, this goes even beyond twisting yourself into a human pretzel. This is really something. Here we go. Uh, Sam Husseini with The Nation and the Institute for Public Accuracy. Uh, Cortez, who was mentioned earlier, and other likely incoming congressional, uh, right, likely incoming uh, congressional um, members next year, proposed slashing the military budget to help pay for human and environmental needs. Uh, do you agree? And if I could, a second question: um, Would you consider introducing and sponsoring Betty McCollum's bill on? Uh, Palestinian children's rights in the Senate. So let me, I now sit on armed services. And boy, I have been in the middle of the sausage making factory on that one. Um, and that has pushed me even more strongly in the direction of systemic reforms. I want to be able to have those debates. I want to be able to get them out in the open and talk about these core issues that affect our government, affect our people. I want to be able to debate them on the floor of the Senate. I want to be able to do amendments on them. Right now, the hold of big money over our government stops much of that. It chokes off much of the debate we should have. So I'm going to give you a system-wide answer because I think that's what matters here. This is not about one particular proposal. This is all the way across. How is it that we get the voices of the people heard in government instead of over and over the voices of the wealthy and the well-connected, the voices of those who can hire armies of lobbyists? So for me, that's what this is about. Well, well, well. Again, in fairness, I don't know when that was. Uh, I don't know, it sounds like it was like a year or two ago. Um, so, Jen, do you believe in cutting the military budget? Well, I think it should be uh, debated on the floor. Oh, yikes. Just yikes. When Elizabeth Warren says this isn't about one proposal, actually it is. Because it's about not, it's not about a specific piece of legislation. It's about, do you think our military budget is too big? Do you think we should cut it? Her answer was, I believe in debate. I think we should debate it. I think our system is so corrupt. We should be able to debate that. Okay, but, okay, so if it was going to be debated, what would your side of the debate be? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that person had an opportunity to follow up. Probably not. It was at the National Press Club, which is a one hell of a jerk, uh, circle jerk kind of institution. But, yeah, the simple answer that I've heard from Bernie Sanders is, Absolutely, it should be cut. And to me, uh, you know, everybody has their most important issue. To me, uh, Elizabeth Warren, there's concerning things beyond just her obvious. Um, she, she basically is the same, uh, same old, same old when it comes to foreign policy. But this kind of goes to her Medicare for all Fakakta plan, which her Medicare for all plan, it basically has a bunch of, you know, pie in the sky, if you want to use that terminology. And she says, well, part of her pay force, which I don't even believe in, we have the money, we don't need to find money to pay for it. But if you want to, if you want to deal in how do we pay for it, part of her pay force are going to be cutting the military budget. Well, this is within the last few years, she won't give a straight answer on cutting the military budget. And on during the debate, she just like meekly gave some vague answer. Well, I think we need to start getting out of the Middle East. Am, am I wrong? No, you're absolutely correct. I One of the things that drives me the most insane about her is this issue. If there's any question that should be super easy to answer, it's should we cut the military budget? Uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> That's not even a, like a super progressive stance, or at least it shouldn't be. That should just be the answer. So to kind of... Um, equivocate if that's the right term on that question is just kind of insane to me 
she she's playing politics yet again. It seems like her default, instead of truly being progressive or truly giving the answer that would benefit Americans and the rest of the entire world, she just plays politics. Right. And honestly, more importantly than that, the playing politics, if you, for example, are somebody, I know a lot of you aren't watching, but if you are someone who likes Elizabeth Warren and is considering voting for her, why, why doesn't anyone ask her? You have a lot of proposals that cost a lot of money. How are you going to get these proposals through if the military budget is $750 billion? Do you vow right now in this interview to cut the military budget at least by a quarter? I think it should be cut by 70%, but let's crawl before we can walk. <laughs> Do you as a candidate pledge to cut the military budget by, let's say, $150,000? She will not answer, I promise you, because I, if I got in front of her, that's one of the things I would ask. She won't answer it because she's trying to appease a little bit of everyone and not to fund anyone. And that is the problem. That is the problem. And I think- I mean, how Hillary-esque, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> and also, when your military budget is more than your, not, your domestic spending budget, so when your military budget is in total more than all the other programs you have in, in the country, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to get a lot of those things through. That's what Bernie Sanders understands. Now, Elizabeth Warren won't give a straight answer on Medicare for all. When she ended up giving a straight answer, it was a Fakakta plan that, who I trust on Medicare, is essentially an, empl an employer head tax. This is from Matt Brunig, read it. Elizabeth Warren's head tax is indefensible. And it would also end, it would also result, her Medicare for all plan, in corporations laying off workers or moving workers from full time to freelance without benefits. Because if Elizabeth Warren's plan went through, it would charge employers $9,500 per employee. So what are employers going to do? They're just going to start moving people to freelance. So, all right, people have health care, but they won't have enough hours to pay their rent. So you basically, you know, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul in that situation. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh, oh, oh.